Hello and welcome to this next topic, topic 22 of A2 OCR A level chemistry. This is how far, it's essentially equilibrium. So the classic equilibrium reaction is a reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen to make ammonia. And first of all, I'm just going to make sure that we can do what is essentially glorified unit 2 stuff. We need to work out how many moles of each of these things is present at equilibrium. So the reaction is between half a mole of nitrogen and one and a half moles of hydrogen in a two decimeter cube reaction vessel. And it says at equilibrium, 0.23 moles of ammonia have been made. Calculate Kc. Now at the end of the last equilibrium topic, I said we we're gonna do a lot more on Kc, and this is where it all comes in. Kc, if you remember, is equal to the concentration of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficient of the power, divided by the concentrations of the reactants, each raised to their stoichiometric coefficient of the power. So for this reaction, that would be Kc is equal to NH3 concentration squared, divided by nitrogen concentration, times by hydrogen concentration squared. And we can work out the units for this, it would be moles per power minus two, decimeters per power six. But what we need to be able to do is calculate all of these concentrations, and then put them into the equation to give us Kc. And if Kc is one, then that's the same amount of both products and reactants. If it's less than one, that means we've got more reactants. If it's more than one, that means we've got more products. So how do we calculate the amount of each of these and then turn that into a concentration? Well, it's essentially a stoichiometry question. So a lot of people like to use the ICE method, which is where you write down the initial amount of everything. You write how much each one changes, and then the amounts at equilibrium. So here the I stands for initial concentration, this is change, and then E is the equilibrium. So we know a few pieces of information. We know we start off with half a mole of nitrogen and one and a half moles of hydrogen. And you have to assume, because it's just those two things that are said, that we haven't got any ammonia yet, which makes sense. And then we know at equilibrium, we've made 0.23 moles of ammonia. That means that we must have gained 0.23 moles of ammonia during that process getting to equilibrium. So here I'm the change of it plus 0.23 moles. And then using the stoichiometry in the equation, I can say that the amount of nitrogen that's been used is half the amount of ammonia that's been made because there's a one there and a two there. So I must have used, so I put minus 0.115 moles of nitrogen. And similarly, because there's a three and a two, you can work out how much hydrogen has been used, and that will be three times as much as the nitrogen has been used, or three over two times by this. To work out how much nitrogen there is at equilibrium, we do 0.5, which was what you started with, minus 0.115, because that's the change, and then you write the answer there. And then the same for hydrogen, so 1.5 minus this. And so these are your equilibrium amounts, but in the KC expression, it asks for equilibrium concentrations, and it's a two decimeter cubed vessel. So we just do amount divided by volume, so these numbers all divided by two, and then they go into this expression. Now, if you have maths running through your veins, you'll see that there's one over two squared, and then one over two, and then one over two cubed. You could take all of those one over twos out and do them separately, but it's probably just as easy to work this all out when you calculate and then just press equals. And so the answer there, if you type it all in, comes out to be 0.357 moles to the power of minus two decimeters to the power of six. It's less than one, so you've got more reactants than products. And that's what I expected when I saw this, because less than half of the reactants have been used. And so in my mind, that makes sense that I get a number less than one. And this type of question happens all the time, so get very used to it. Know how to use this ice method because I find that really quite useful. Most of these kind of methods I don't really use, it's not the way my brain works, but this one is very good and it lays it out in a way that's exactly how my brain works it. If you have a different way, then use a different way, but I like this one so I'd suggest it. And the next thing I want to talk about is quickly what would happen if, for instance, I raise the temperature of this reaction. Now, I don't know if you remember, but this forward reaction is exothermic. And we know from the Chatelier's principle that if I increase the temperature, then that favours the endothermic reaction, and so Kc is going to decrease. 
That makes sense because I'm making more of the reactants, and so I end up with a number even smaller than this one is. And also, if I decrease the temperature, that means it favours the exothermic reaction, which is going towards the right. That would make more products, and I'd get a higher value for Kc. But that's all you can do with Kc and link it to Le Chatelier's principle, really. Because the only thing which affects Kc is temperature. Because Kc is a constant, and the only thing that affects equilibrium constants is temperature. All the other things that we know affect the position of equilibrium, like pressure, or concentrations, those things don't affect equilibrium constants, but they still affect the position of equilibrium, and we need to be able to make that distinction. So let's talk about pressure. Increasing the pressure, we know, makes this reaction go further to the right, because the right has fewer gaseous molecules, and so that decreases the pressure. But that's an AUS level explanation, that's a Le Chatelier's principle explanation, and sometimes I ask for those, but sometimes they ask for a more complicated Kc explanation. And you've got to be able to do those as well. So the way you explain that using Kc is like this. Increasing the pressure increases the concentration of all of these gases. If I make the reaction vessel smaller, so if I decrease this to one decimeter cubed, then all the pressures will double. And this concentration will double, this concentration will double, and this concentration will double. And that doubling of all of those concentrations has a different effect on the top of this expression than it does on the bottom of this expression. Doubling the concentration of ammonia will increase the top by a factor of four, because doubling it and then squaring that, that's a factor of four bigger. And doubling the concentration of nitrogen and doubling the concentration of hydrogen, well, hydrogen would double and then be cubed, and then that will be doubled. And so that actually is increasing the bottom of this reaction by 16 times. And so you might expect Kc to go down by a factor of 4. Because 4 divided by 16 is a quarter, you'd expect Kc to be a quarter of the size. But Kc isn't affected by pressure. Kc is only affected by temperature. And so the way that the reaction deals with this is by increasing the concentration of ammonia and decreasing the concentration both of the reactants. So when NH3 increases and these decrease, that's exactly the same thing as shifting the equilibrium to the right. You're making more ammonia and less of the reactants are there. It's the same thing that has to happen here. So the numerator has to increase and the denominator has to decrease. And the only way you can do that is by increasing the concentration of the products and decreasing the concentration of the reactants. You could give a very similar explanation as to why decreasing the pressure makes it go left, decreasing the pressure, and then make the top smaller, but the bottom even smaller than that. So you'd have to increase the bottom more than the top in order to keep Kc constant. Or you could do it with adding reactants. So if I add more hydrogen, for instance, the bottom increases and the top, nothing happens. So to make Kc stay constant, you have to increase the top and decrease the bottom, which is shifting to the right. And the same if I remove ammonia, then the concentration at the top decreases, and to keep Kc constant, the bottom has to decrease and the top has to increase. So that would also shift the equilibrium position to the right. And so every explanation that you give about equilibrium position and the principle can be explained by this. The only one that can't is temperature. You kind of use the principle to inform your answer. So we know that the forward reaction is exothermic, so increasing the temperature makes it go in the direction of the endothermic reaction, and so Kc will decrease. So you've got to remember, only temperature affects the equilibrium constant. And I say equilibrium constants because there's more than one. This is just the first one. This uses concentration. There's going to be a bunch more as we go through, and the one I'm going to talk about today is equilibrium constant to do with pressure. So that is Kp rather than Kc. Okay, so you can also work out what's called Kp, which is the pressure equilibrium constant. And to do that, I need to introduce a couple of new terms. The first one is mole fraction, and the second is partial pressure. So for mole fraction, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the fraction of the amount of all of the gas of the total. So the total amount of gas in this situation is two and a half moles. And the mole fraction of each of them would just be the fraction of their contribution to that total 
amount. So the mole fraction of hydrogen would be a half over two and a half or one over five. The mole fraction of nitrogen would be 0.75 over two and a half, which is three over 10. And the mole fraction of ammonia would be 1.25 over 2.5, which is a half. And these should and do all add up to make one in total. Now these could also be written as 0 0.5, 0 0.3 and 0 0.2. That's absolutely fine. The second one I said was partial pressure. And for that, we need to know what the total pressure of this system is. So let's just say that it's 100 kilopascals. The partial pressure is actually very similar to the mole fraction. It's like the fraction of this total pressure, which is due to each one. And the way you calculate it is just multiply the mole fraction by the pressure, the total pressure. And so the partial pressure of hydrogen would be 20 kilopascals, 30 for nitrogen, and 50 for ammonia. The Kp expression is very similar to the Kc expression except instead of concentrations, it uses partial pressure. Now the partial pressure equation or expression is very similar to that for Kc. So for this reaction, it would just be the partial pressure of ammonia squared divided by the partial pressure of nitrogen and then divided again by the partial pressure of hydrogen cubed. So that would be this equation. And for this, you've just got to keep a track of what units you're using. So you could change these all into pascals or you could use them as kilopascals, or you could use them as atmospheres, if you've got enough atmospheres, it really doesn't matter, but make sure that you write the correct unit that it works everything on. So let's do that. And this is where I need to be careful with units, because kilopascals are thousands of pascals. And now I've put it in brackets, because that shows whoever's looking that both kilo and pascal both need to be raised to the power of minus two. If I'd have just written kilopascals to the power of minus two, I'm not sure that's obvious, that the kilo is to the power of minus two and the pascals is to the power of minus two. To be safe, I'd put it in brackets, or I'd do it in the standard units, which are pascals. So to get this into pascals, I'd need to times it by k to the power of minus two. And just to check that, I would do the whole equation again using thousands of these rather than just them. So in order to reach this answer, this is 1.04 times 10 to the power of minus 2. I've just times that by 1,000 to the power of minus 2. So that gets me 1.04 times 10 to the power of minus 8. Now I'm just going to check by using 50,000, 30,000, and 20,000 to make sure that that's the right answer. And sure enough, it comes out as 1.04 times 10 to the power of minus 8. The reason it's Pascal to the power of minus 2 is because there's two pascals on the top, so pascals times pascals, and then four, so pascal to the power of minus four, times by pascal to the two, gives you pascal to the power of minus two. That's some lovely GCSE indices rules right there. Now the very last thing, now I've been using this equation for all of my equilibria, and the problem with it is, is they're all gases. So true, you can do Kc with it, you can do Kp with it, but what happens if they're not all gases? And you can deal with that. Solids, you can't use for Kc or Kp because solids don't have a concentration or a pressure. So if you see a solid in your equilibrium reaction, then you just don't include it in Kc or Kp at all. For Kp, you can only do gases because only gases have the pressure that you can talk about. So if anything apart from a gas is in the equilibrium reaction, then it doesn't go into Kp expression. You can calculate the concentration of both gases and solutions and liquids, but do be careful when you're dealing with any heterogeneous equilibrium. And that's everything for this topic, the how far or equilibrium for A2 OCRA level chemistry. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you can join me next time. Goodbye.